Our next speaker is Christopher Jones. Mr. Jones is an American entrepreneur, investor, and best-selling author. In 1999, Mr. Jones founded the digital marketing and technology company Pepper Jam, which he sold to eBay in 2009 after the company was recognized for, for three straight years as one of the fastest growing companies in the United States. Mr. Jones has invested in 25 early stage companies and helped raise over $40 million in venture capital. He will be speaking on an important topic to all of us, connecting with the millennial generation, insights from Amazon, Alexa, Warby Parker, and Instagram. Please help me welcome Mr. Christopher Jones. Thank you, Ronnie, for that kind introduction. And um, before I get started, uh, that presentation by Lizzie deserves another round of applause, please. Um, before I dive into my presentation, I have some quick housekeeping items, since many of you are here to receive CME credits. So first, you see my disclosures. I have no affiliations that I need to disclose. Um, and then second, my plenary today has very clear learning objectives which are highlighted for you on the slide screen. Today I'm super excited to talk to you about technology and the role it might play in helping you as a pediatrician more effectively connect with millennials. To help us stay focused, I'm going to explore three innovative companies that millennials absolutely love. Amazon Alexa, designer prescription eyewear company Warby Parker, and Instagram. However, before we get to that deeper dive, I'd like to reflect a bit on my experience interacting with many of you in this room over the last three days on the topic of technology and how it might better leverage, how you might better leverage it in your practices. First things first, you guys are awesome. This conference is awesome. I believe each and every one of you in this room are absolute rock stars. Not only, please, go ahead, clap. It, it, it's so inspiring. Not only have you dedicated your life to providing pediatric care to America's greatest asset, its youth, but you find yourself uniquely positioned at a time in our society where putting our children's best interests first has never been more important. My overarching question today is how can technology help you be the absolute best and most effective pediatrician possible? I understand that many of you are from the baby boomer generation, you've told me, and your point of view about leveraging technology to better connect with millennials is tempered by considerations around retirement or just a general resistance to technology because of lack of exposure. Regardless of your age or how long you have been practicing pediatric medicine, there are some very important considerations for you to take into account about the millennial generation. First, there are 80 million millennials in the United States that grew up right along technology, right alongside. As a frame of reference, millennials already outnumber baby boomers by 500,000, and that number is only going to increase over the coming years. Of the 80 million millennials in the United States, 22 million of them, as you know, are parents. There are 9,000 babies born each day to millennials. 70% of millennials check their phone every day. Millennials are expected to take 25,000 or more selfies during their lifetime. <laughs> and according to the Journal of Family Medicine, over 250 millennials have died from taking a selfie over the last six years. That's 20 times more deaths from taking selfies than from shark attacks. So, I know that many of you are like me, and the obvious knee-jerk reaction to this data is, what is wrong with this generation? But however, taking lots of selfies highlights a much more significant and meaningful trend with millennials. 
the way that millennials communicate with one another and the ways they prefer to communicate with other generations has caused a significant intergenerational clash. The idea of face-to-face -face communication, communicating via landline phones, fax, I think I just said fax, and other dated modes of communication have been replaced by video messaging, text messaging, and connecting via sharing videos and pictures. All right, by a show of hands, how many of the pediatricians in this room find it difficult to understand, embrace, or for that matter, keep up with all the various social networks and communication tools millennials are using to communicate? So the lights are bright, but I'm seeing about 100% uh, hands go up. So it is hard to keep up. And since that's the case, and many of the tools are foreign to your preferred your preferred ways of communication, it's very easy to wait on the sidelines, right? Instead of learning how to communicate via platforms like Instagram, Facebook Messenger, and text message. I totally get that. Plus, I also appreciate the concerns that you as a pediatrician or the academy may have about the security or the appropriateness of communicating with patients over social networks and messenger apps. But I truly have a larger concern for the healthcare industry in general and pediatrics in particular as it relates to connecting with millennials. And that concern relates to the, to the power of technology to fulfill millennials' number one motivation, convenience. When you look at all the most beloved advances to consumer technology, they all address one fundamental human drive of the millennial, convenience. In fact, it's impossible to deny that convenience often trumps access or even quality when millennials are making buying decisions. Think about it. Millennials love ride-sharing apps like Uber and Lyft. Why? Because it's a lot more convenient to pull out your phone, hit call a car, and get from point A to point B without having to first flail your body, maybe, into oncoming traffic to get the attention of a yellow cab. By a show of hands, how many of you have had to do that in years past? Once you get to your destination with Uber or Lyft, you just get out of your car. No cash or credit card required as the app conveniently takes care of that for you. Millennials are also in love with grocery and dog food delivery services like Instacart. I'm laughing because my wife is one of those that are addicted to this stuff, but food delivery services like Grubhub, and Uber Eats. Again, why? These services are more convenient than having to drive to the store or restaurant, which means millennials can spend more time doing other things they love, like posting pictures to Snapchat and Instagram, <laughs> or, which you'll find out, trying on a funky prescription eyewear from Warby Parker. More on that in a moment. So here's the point. The point is that millennials are driven by technology that makes their lives more convenient. This reality makes it absolutely key for pediatricians to adopt technologies that are congruent with the expectations of millennials around convenience, while also taking into consideration other wants and desires that fuel the behavior of millennials. So let's go back to the primary question of this presentation. What does it mean to leverage technology to connect with millennials? The answer that, to that very question, I'd like to dive a bit deeper into the lessons we can learn from three of the most widely accepted technology innovators that millennials absolutely love, Alexa, Warby Parker, and Instagram. Let's first start with the extraordinary power of Amazon Alexa to communicate with millennials. First, a bit of background. For those of you that don't own or haven't been exposed to Am Amazon Alexa, hello. <laughs> but, it is a voice-enabled digital assistant. You ask it questions and it uses its massive database to quickly spit out answers and respond to commands. For instance, you could ask Alexa to play music, turn down the lights, set reminders to take your pills, or even get recommendations on where to eat or what to buy. Over 50 million Americans own an Amazon Alexa, 
And while other smart devices exist, such as Google Home and Apple HomePod, Amazon controls about 70% of the market. Not surprisingly, millennials are the most prolific users of Alexa. In fact, in 2000, by 2019, nearly one in two millennials will own an Alexa or a similar voice-enabled digital assistant. So when you, when you add in the ubiquity and adoption by millennials of other types of voice-activated technologies, such as Hey Siri and Hey Google, you see how critical it is for pediatricians to understand how to use these technologies to connect with millennials. So let's first take a look at an example of how a millennial might use Amazon Alexa to connect with a pers prospective pediatrician. Alexa. Pediatricians in Orlando, Florida. Here are a few top rated ones in Orlando, Florida. Nemours Children's Hospital, Orlando. Middleton Pediatrics. Nemours Children's Urgent Care, Waterford Lakes. Physician Room Service. So 40% of millennials turn to voice activated technology before making buying decisions, before making purchases. So in that video, notice what's called structured data, including the company's name, icons, and Yelp ratings and reviews. Also note the rankings. If you're number five, I didn't, you weren't in the results. But if you're number one, things are good. Alexa, what are the office hours for pediatric associates of Kingston, Pennsylvania? The Pediatric Associates of Kingston on Tioga Avenue is currently closed but will be open tomorrow from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. So, number one, shout out to my pediatrician, Jeff Kyle, who, uh, uh, see, 40% of millennials also use voice-activated technology for customer service needs, and that's only increasing. There's structured data there, including office hours, distance, company name, address, and phone number. Also note uh, that in this case, they had the proper industry classification, which is pediatrician. There's a lot of room for errors there, and you guys need to ask yourself the question of whether or not your structured, dat structured data, next slide, uh, is accurate and consistent. Uh, you need to verify your business listings and keep them current. You need to go on the offensive, not the defensive. Uh, and you can't leave it to chance to generate lots of positive reviews. And I get how touchy this stuff is, gang. I, I just want to bring it to your attention that this is how millennials are finding information about you guys. You need to upload a logo and images to personalize the search experiences. And you need to take a close look at SEO best practices to improve rankings because they're influencing what comes up in those types of searches. So, all right, let's take a look at another technology innovator that provides insights uh, on how you can more effectively connect with millennials. One of my absolute favorites, and I'm wearing a pair of Warby Parker glasses today, which is one of about 13 pair that I own. So by a show of hands, how many of you in the room have heard of Warby Parker? That's fairly impressive. It was at least half to, to three quarters of the room. For those of you that don't know, Warby Parker is an internet and mobile enabled provider of description of designer prescription glasses. Warby Parker is a bit of a David versus Goliath story in that it is leveraging technology and innovation to go up against the world's number one eyewear company, Luxottica. Luxottica designs, manufactures, distributes, and retails its own leading branded glasses like Lens Crafters and Sunglass Hut, but also makes sunglasses and prescription frames for designer brands such as Chanel, Prada, Burberry, and virtually all the other top designers. By owning so many brands and controlling so many others for so many years, Luxottica has been able to control the eyewear market and keep retail prices very high. That's until Warby Parker came to market eight short years ago. But lower, more affordable pricing is only part of the reason it has become a multi-billion dollar company that has become the preferred eyewear provider to millennials. So while at first glance you might think that Warby Parker isn't a technology company, 
I'd argue that the company would not have achieved its dramatic growth and success with millennials without leveraging the efficiencies afforded to it via e-commerce, digital marketing, and the internet. Let's take a closer look at how and why Warby Parker connects so effectively with millennials. Through a simple but efficient design, the Warby Parker website quickly establishes itself as millennial friendly. Millennials are deal seekers, they are price conscious, but they're not cheap. Millennials are motivated by real or perceived value. To the millennial generation, Warby Parker is the affordable alternative to expensive designer eyewear with a $95 starting point for designer prescription glasses. As highlighted earlier, and please take note, value is important, but convenience is an even stronger motivating factor to millennials when they are making buying decisions. First, to help you find the perfect glasses, you can either try glasses on virtually or participate in a super convenient and innovative try before you buy program. Second, Warby Parker makes it easy to buy its discounted eyewear via a user-friendly e-commerce website and mobile app. Alternatively, Warby fans can visit one of its 100 retail locations across the United States. I think the key takeaway here is how Warby Parker is digital first. They not only take on the issue of price and turn it on its head, but they totally embrace everything millennials love about technology. Warby is a poster example of putting convenience ahead of other less important buy buying criteria for millennials. And finally, Warby Parker embraces one of the fundamental buying criteria of millennials. Millennials get behind and select socially conscious brands over most others. So if $95 prescription eyewear shipped conveniently to your door for free wasn't enough, Warby Parker donates a free pair of designer prescription glasses to someone in need for, for every pair purchased. The Warby Parker Buy a Pair, Give a Pair program has distributed over four million pairs of glasses to those in need, helping to alleviate the problem of impaired vision. And guess what? Earlier this year, Warby Parker launched an entire line of prescription eyewear for, you guessed it, kiddos. Yahoo! That's awesome. A few other important notes about Warby Parker before we take a deeper dive into Instagram. Last year, Warby Parker launched an online eye exam, further positioning itself with millennials around convenience. The eye exam cost the consumer about $100. Add that to the $95 prescription eyewear and the total cost is under $200. In contrast, the average cost of an eye exam and eyeglasses in a traditional optometry office is over 500. Another critical note. In April 2018, United Healthcare began featuring Warby Parker as a vision network provider. Whether this is right or wrong is not what I'm arguing, but insurance is recognizing Warby Parker's innovation and ability to satisfy, satisfy customers with value, and you guessed it, convenience. So now let's take a closer look at Instagram. Instagram has over 1 billion users. 72% of teens use Instagram every single day. Under, tw under 25 year olds use Instagram 32 minutes a day. Selena Gomez has 140 million Instagram followers, right? That's influence. 60% of users discover products on Instagram. That's even more important. Not surprisingly, 90% of the top 100 brands are on Instagram. If you want to reach and better connect with millennial buyers, you must understand and meet them where they are. This means you putting together a strategy to leverage pictures, videos, and educational-based content to connect with millennials. Most millennials use Snapchat and Instagram to connect with friends and with businesses. Facebook and Twitter are primarily text-based and lack the soul, the emotion, and connectivity that Instagram and Snapchat impart. The brain recognizes familiar images in 100 milliseconds. That's about the time it takes to blink, which is much more powerful than words. Graphically, the data shows that out of all the primary forms of digital communication, Facebook is furthest to the right with the least millennial users. 
You may not be reaching your intended audience unless you know the demographic that consumes the various digital outlets. If you are trying to get a message to teens and young adults, Facebook and Twitter may not be reaching them because they are busy connecting with friends and businesses on Snapchat and Instagram. Here's two reasons why you want to leverage pictures and video to connect with millennials on Instagram. A recent study highlighted that 41% of millennials said social media would affect their choice of, of a specific doctor, hospital, or medical facility. Another study highlighted that 90% of 18 to 24 year olds said they would trust medical information shared by others on their social media networks. In chatting with dozens of you over the last three days, I can say with certainty that you would prefer to provide important health information to millennials over non-medical professionals. The key is not to stand on the sidelines. That requires you to develop a strategy to communicate and educate millennials on platforms like Instagram. Allow me to briefly go back to the beginning of today's talk and then provide a summary and conclusion of my thoughts today. Technology moves fast. Many of you are overwhelmed by how quick it seems millennials jump from one platform to the next, or by the fact that they seem to be a generation that just doesn't get it. It's a fact that technology moves fast, and for many of you, that is an uncomfortable reality. I totally get it, and I can relate. However, the time is now, and I hope the message is clear. You just can't sit on the sidelines any longer. Here's what I know and hope you take away from today's presentation. Millennials adopt the latest and greatest technologies to find important information, to make buying decisions, to address customer service questions, and communicate. Millennials are used to speedy apps that quickly solve problems and drive wow experiences. Companies like Amazon Alexa, Warby Parker, and Instagram provide profound insights about the power of providing cool, trendy, and useful technology while also speaking at the level of the millennial mindset. Pediatricians and medical professionals must embrace the latest technology in order to meet the high standards and expectations of millennials. Resources must be allocated and attention must be focused to make sure your business is easily found on the most popular devices and that your practice is seen as an innovator and not a laggard. Thank you for your time.